Well, hello once again. I'm Pastor John Cress here at First Baptist of Portland, Kansas. And as always, we are glad that you have chosen to join with us as we go through God's Word. For the past several weeks, we have been going through the book of Exodus, and we will continue with that with chapter 24 for today. Uh, in chapter four, 24, we're focusing mostly on this morning, verses 4 through 8. Let us read together. Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. Then he arose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain with twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the sons of Israel, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and the other half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. So Moses took the blood and sprinkled on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. We have a lot of action going on right now. Maybe not what seems like at first that it seems to be more ceremony, but it's still an action. God has been talking to his people in the previous chapters about types of laws and festivals and all what they can and cannot do. He is establishing a relationship with them and he wants them to know the parameters. The Bible refers to this agreement as a covenant. But what is a, co a covenant? A lot of people try to compare it to a contract, which we know today, but there are differences between a contract and a covenant. And I can't go into all the differences, but I'll try to highlight a few so that when we understand, when we come to the new covenant which Christ has established for us, we have a basis to understand how to live that out by the example of the Israelites and the Old Covenant. First of all, it this whole covenant is, well, the contract is a legally binding uh, piece of paper. A covenant isn't. You can't take a broken covenant, which you really can't have a broken covenant, which we'll get to in a bit, but it wouldn't work in the, the court system. Um, the con because the covenant is a spiritual agreement, while the contract is a legal uh, document. A contract is also an agreement between two parties. You're coming in together and you're saying, okay, here's what we're going to do. And that almost sounds like a covenant, but with a covenant, there's a promise. A contract limits what people will and will not do. A contract says, if you do this, I will promise this. A contract is also mutually beneficial, while a covenant is something you fulfill. You said you will do this. Contract is beneficial to both. A covenant doesn't have to be. Um, you can opt out of a contract, while a covenant is about having the strength to hold on to your promise. You are doing all you can not to find the loophole to get out. Some other, uh, these are just a few legalistic terms, but how is it lived out? First of all, it's important that we have the, the, con the covenant before our eyes. Uh, that Moses, we see in, in this chapter, he wrote it down so that the people would know and remember what that covenant is. Because if we don't know what the covenant is, how can we live it out? How can we live out the promises and the relationship we have with God. So we, that's why we have the Word, the Bible. It's God's covenant with us saying, look, this is what we, I agreed on with you. Then, with the covenant of the Old Testament, there had to be sacrifices. This was done through burnt offerings and peace offerings, which we have saw in our reading this morning. And this way, the people admitted that they had sin in their lives and that they need to address God uh, through this issue before trying to have this covenant relationship. But let's, let's get things right with you, God, before we talk about this. 
another thing is that there was not only blood on the sacrifice, but how it was sprinkled on the people and represented the outpouring of life, as we see in Leviticus later 17. It showed one life given for another. And almost a thousand years later, God did not forget the blood of his covenant. He said, look, life was given so that you might have a relationship with me. The life was the lamb. Go 2,000 years, 2,000 plus years later, approximately, Christ said, I'm giving my life so that you can have a relationship with God. Your sins are now covered by my blood. It is agreement from God to you. It is all about this new relationship which you have with God. All you have to do is believe in me and follow my commands. And I will be with you, he says, to the ends of the earth. I will walk with you every step of the way. You will be my people and I will be your God. We ask so many times when we enter into a covenant with God, Lord, you're asking a lot of me. Are we? Is he, should I say? No. He's being faithful. And he just wants to remind us, yes, we have things we need to do. But for the most part, he's done most of the work. He's cleared the way so that you could have a relationship with him. He's gave his life so that you could have this relationship and this agreement and these promises. All you have to do is ask God for strength and knowledge and how to up, uphold your end. Because you see that in this covenant, it's not because of law and retribution that we stick to it like a contract. Well, I can't get out of this contract because I'm legally tied in. No. With the covenant, it's saying, look, I want to do it with the help of God, best way I can, because it's based upon not fear and retribution, but love. Christ died for me. He loved me that much that I want to live out of love for him. That means maybe having to die to ourselves, take up our cross and follow him where we don't want to go. But in the end, it's worth it. Are we trying to live out our lives with God as if we were in a contract, trying to find the loopholes, trying to avoid retribution? Or are we trying to live out a covenant relationship built on love and a promise. I prefer to try to live out under the covenant. I hope you do too. Let's pray. Lord, I just want to thank you for this time. As we just talked about the difference between a covenant and a contract. With contracts, dear Lord, there's fear, there is retribution, and that's not really a good relationship to build anything off of. But with the covenant, it's a, allowing two parties to come together who maybe had, were at odds before, but to come together without fear, but based upon love and promise for a better future. You cleared the way for us, dear Lord. All you said to do is follow me. Help us to do that today. Even when the road is maybe a path which we prefer not to take or seems a little hard, we ask for strength for this day, for this day alone. Tomorrow we'll ask the same thing, but we just need to come to you for today. Give us that strength so that we can fulfill our covenant relationship with you as you did all those years ago on Calvary. In this we pray. Amen. May you have a great covenant day today. Keep following in the promises of your God. He loves you so. Until we meet again.
God bless.